Hello, my name is Sue Lewis. I'm going to run you through this webinar called Getting Started with Career Pilot. So this webinar is a hands-on opportunity to find out more about Career Pilot and think about how you're going to get started. And I'm going to show you some of the resources you can use to use the site with students. So as part of uh, series two of two webinars, the first one was an introduction to Career Pilot, and this is called Getting Started with Career Pilot. If you want to see any of those webinars, we do have all sorts of dates. If you go to our advisor zone, you can apply for one of the uh, place on one of those sessions. So what I'm going to do in this webinar is give you a quick overview of the site and the resources that are available. Then you can start thinking about using Career Pilot from a student point of view, so you get a feel for that. Then I'm going to show you some of the resources you can use to deliver, and then how you can review view all the reports that have been generated by the students completing their side of the system and then you can start thinking about how you're going to plan your implementation. So just to explain Career Pilot in overview, the introduction to Career Pilot goes through Career Pilot in much more detail. I'm just going to give you the headlines here and then you can get started in using it. So Career Pilot has four zones. Everything that happens from the student zone. Uh, this is where you can access also the reported zone, the advisor zone and the parent zone. We also have a new tool called the Pathway Planner, which I'll just mention briefly at the end. This is a triage tool and model that helps you allocate guidance at three different levels. So if you decide to attach that to your career pilot site, then there'll be things for the students to do. You'll be able to see data and in the advisor's order, all the lesson plans and materials you can use with the Pathway Planner. So just to explain a little bit about funding, in this geographical area, Career Pilot has been completely free to use because it's funded by 20 universities and six UniConnect projects. Now for 2021-22, we have a slight change. In this area, which is the Sun UniConnect, they're given the funding directly to schools to pay their own subscriptions. But in the rest of that green area, Career Pilot is free to use. And that's all four zones of Career Pilot. However, if you want to add the Pathway Planner on, you do that as a, an add-on which costs £250 per year. If you're outside our region, you pay for Career Pilot and the Pathway Planner. More about that at the end. So just to explain Career Pilot and overview, Career Pilot is all about having a whole school approach to careers, which fits with Gatsby 1, which is your stable careers programme. So for every year group, there are specific activities that help them to develop their career skills. What we want to try to do is help students become managers of their own careers. And you can see there's activities from year seven right up to year 13, and also for college students as well. So if you're a careers leader, you could have one site that's got all the information support that will help you deliver your career leader role. So, for example, for students, we try to teach them a three-stage careers process. They can apply right throughout their life. Then, as I said, there's activities for every year group. And wrapped around that, we've got lots of resources that you can use to deliver career pilot, like five-week PSHE programs. So as a careers leader, you try to engage all the other people in your school environment to be thinking about careers or signposting. So we've got activities for tutors or PSHE, PSHE staff. Obviously, we've got the parents' site, uh, subject teachers have got activities that they can use to enhance their subjects and make them more related to careers. And then everything's leading towards this personal guidance, careers guidance. Um, so lots of information here if you're the guidance advisor in the school context. If you decide to have the pathway planner, then you'll start to use that in year 11, 12, or maybe at the, early, the end of year 10. So what we're trying to do is help students understand why they need to become managers of their own careers. And to help them do that, we've got a video, just three minutes, and can give them ideas about things they can do to become managers of their own careers, like knowing themselves, their values, their interests, doing stuff to build their CV or their skills, knowing all their options in some detail, and then using their available supporters. If you want to look at that video, it's available on our homepage here. So this is Career Pilot, a one-stop website for young people, obviously, but also for parents, advisors, and teachers as well. Students can sign in here. They register, first of all, and they sign in. The benefits of that 
is that they then can be using the career tools. And the career tools are where they're going to be building up the choices they're particularly interested in, the job sectors they might like or providers they might be interested in. So they'll be creating their report by using the career tools and that data will then be available to you. So you can see, for example, what job sectors your year 12s might be interested in. You can access everything from careerpilot.org.uk. So you can see, you can hear, you can access the advisor zone and the parent zone. And if you sign in as a member of staff, you just sign in exactly the same place as the students, that top right circle. So here are popular tools, job profiles, course search, apprenticeship, vacancy search, etc. Over a thousand video stories in the site, all tied into jobs and qualifications. Then what we have in the site is our three-stage process I mentioned earlier. So try and teach this to students so they can come back to it. Start with you, explore your options, plan your next steps. A lot of our resources are structured under these three sections. But students might already have a pathway they're interested in, and then they can find out information and advice about that particular pathway. So three stages. The first one is about them, trying to find out what motivates you, what you're interested in. And you can see how there's activities for every age group. The second stage is exploring your options. You could do that in a range of ways, by age, or by apprenticeship, vacancies, or college courses, whatever it might be. And then it's how you're going to plan your next steps, how you're going to move yourself forward so you're in a good position to progress. And I'm going to show you a few things as, as we go through, just to show you everything's leading towards them having a report, which can be quite detailed and have all their choices. When the careers advisor has done their interview with them, they can record their report straight onto the site. So it's visible then to the student and any other staff member that's got access to them. That can also be seen in a dashboard format, which is a quick summary of the key things from their career tools. So let me show you how you can get started. First of all, if you start to think about our year group, that could be a good way to get started. So have a think about a year group you want to get started with. To help you with this, we do have a booklet which is available in our advisor zone in the members area. So you do need to log on to the back end of CareerPilot in order to access some of these resources. And in that Get Started guide, it shows you by age group what activities you could do that are appropriate to age and stage and shows you all the available resources and also shows you how that can help you make Gatsby as well. It's also a new version for college courses, year one and two. So to help you with getting started, we have got an implementation sheet that you could use. We could start thinking about what what your group you're working with, what activities they're going to do, what resources you're going to use, how you're going to tell the staff, when you're going to deliver, and that how that's going to help with your Gatsby benchmarks. And at the bottom, you can see you can actually add on other things that might be available, like some of our activities um, and resources that we offer that wrap around a careers programme. And we offer also offer lots of free training, so you could think too about which training you might want to use. OK, so just to explain a little bit more about CareerPilot. As we said, we've got activities for every age group. So on the student site, you could say to students, why don't you go and do the activities for your nine? And those will be activities specifically useful for your nine students, probably by choosing their option choices. But what works best is when you actually deliver a proper session to the students of about 50 minutes to an hour. And what we have are presentations that go with these particular activities that could be delivered by a tutor, a PSHE staff member. And a lot of these are now available as recorded lessons so they could facilitate somebody in my team delivering that lesson virtually. If you decide to do the Pathway Planner, then that will be coming in here in year 11 and 12. And there's slightly different presentations if you're using that. Now, there's lots of other things you could do. The wraparound resources are things you can do to um, think about how you can deliver careers across the curriculum. The green activities here are the five-week PSHE programmes with all the resources. You can pick and mix what you use. The pink ones are 20-minute career-related activities that you could do in tutor time that don't require a computer. There's also activities for every subject teacher. There's 23 for Key Stage 3, sorry, Key Stage 4, and the same for Key Stage 5. And they link to a particular aspect of the curriculum that, as a subject teacher, you're delivering anyway, and give you five or six ideas about how you can relate that more to careers. 
And then we've got things like hot jobs, posters of jobs predicted to grow. You could have them in classrooms. You can have them in social media formats. So some schools send them out to parents as part of the newsletter, Job of the Week. And um, we've just released a pack specifically about the health service. So there's 12 posters related to health uh, NHS jobs. And there's also six 20 minute activities so students can get into more detail about some of those jobs. So one key thing you have to tell students is how to tag the things they're interested in. What we find is if you don't tell them how to do this, sometimes they miss it. In the top right of most pages, there's an option to add if you like it. So if a student likes this job, animal care worker, that'll get added into their job sectors. And if later they decide they don't want to do that, they can get rid of it. So it's all about giving them flexibility so they can pick things, but change and flex as they develop more knowledge about themselves and the world of careers. So if you think about a year group they want to work with, what you can do in a minute is be a student. So I'm going to show you how you can log in as a student. It's quite good to do this because then you'll get a feel for what you're asking your students to do. So first of all, you're going to get your students to register. And when you click on this button at the top right of the homepage, careerpalette.org.uk, then the registration form comes up. And what, we're, what I would suggest is you don't use your own email because you want to keep that for your staff login, that you can have a play this is going to be a sample login. So use your first name, surname, mine is Sue Lewis, at normail.com. And don't put yourself in your own school. When there's a choice of putting a, a school name in, start typing training school 2020-21 and choose that one. And then you're in our play school and you can have a look around. When you get in there, maybe try some of the activities for the age group you've identified. See what those activities are like. Um, and you could be tagging the things you're interested in to build your career tools report. Now, as this is a recording, you could do this for however long you want to. If we're in the live session, we do this for about 10 to 15 minutes. But it'll give you a feel for us like to be a student using the site. So hopefully you had a chance to play and you like the activities you thought they were age appropriate and they were easy for students to use independently. So those are the activities you could direct students straight through to, but you know, it'd be better to deliver it as part of a one hour session in an IT room where you're doing an introduction. And we've got lesson plans for every year group. So if you go to the advisor zone, you'll see that under each key stage, there'll be a particular presentation. So year 10 might be focused on work experience, year nine on option choices, year 11 on post 16 choices. So as I said, you get a lot of those are available as recorded video session. So it's definitely worth having a look at the presentations we've got and thinking about whether you're going to use those when you're delivering a session on Career Pilot to particular year groups. I mentioned the five week PSHE programs. They're all also in the advisor zone by key stage. And as I said, you can pick a mix. You don't have to use everything, but there's quite a lot of nice resources. The little pink activities, they're in by key stage as well. We've got those for key stage three and key stage four. These are 20 minute two to time activities that don't require a computer. So what I want you to do now is log out as a student. And what, what you can do then is log in with your staff login. Now, if you haven't got a staff login, it's because your school um, hasn't completed a day churn agreement. As soon as they've done that, we uh, issue a password to your password keeper and they can set up passwords for you. So that's something you will need to sort out at your school level. And I'll tell you how you can find out about these things as we go through. So for this part of the session, I'm going to show you how things look from the other side of the system. So you're not in as a student now, you'll be in as a staff member. And now as a staff member, you can get access to the reporting zone and also the members part of the advisor zone. Some parts of the advisor zone are free access, but some you require a password. And what we, we use in this part of this session is our training school so that you don't use any live data. Okay, so just remember your school will need to complete a data and agreement and then any member of staff um, that a school chooses can have access to the reporting zone and the advisor zone members area. When you've got that login, this is what you're going to see when you log in. You're in now to the reporting zone. But what you can see here, you can get to the other parts of the system. 
so you could go to the student site and you go straight in there and when you wanted to get back to the reporting zone you just click under your name admin and then you're back in the reporting zone you can also from here get to the advisor zone as well the members area so that one login in the future will give you access to all three zones of the site so if you were doing this as a live session, what I would get you to do now is to log on as an admin, download that presentation for the year group you're focusing on, have a look at the scheme of the work for um, the particular year group, and look at some of the 20 minute activities. And there's lots of other resources in the advisor zone as well. So this would be an opportunity for you to look at those activities. You can have a look at some of those now, but just bear in mind, you might not be able to access all of them until you've got your your Advisor, uh, your reporting zone login, which will give you access to the advisor zone as well. So this would be an opportunity in terms of getting started to think about what resources you're going to use. If you're using the pathway planner, just to make a point that if you're doing the five, if you're not doing the five-week PSHE program, the way it normally works is you have to do two sessions. One is you get your students registered, then you can actually set them up for pathway planner because they can't see it until you've set them up. And then you'll do the Pathway Planner session, which I'll mention a bit later. If you are doing the five-week PSHE programs, program, the way it works is they register in Lesson 1 and they complete the Pathway Planner in Session 5. As I said, we do have a lot of these lessons recorded now. And if you go to start with you online tutorials for your age, you'll see that there's a recorded lesson for every year group. We did these in lockdown so students could be directed to complete these lessons themselves. But you can use them as part of any organised session you're doing with your students. And again, they reflect on those activities for each year age group. So some of the other things in the advisor zone. We've got, as I said, activities for subject teachers to use so they can relate their subject more closely to careers. We've got these for Key Stage 4 and Key Stage 5. And we've got hot jobs, various other things too. Um, if you're introducing career power to parents, we've got templates of emails you can send out to parents and for staff and for students as well, which have got all the links and explain what the website's all about. Um, these are the PSHE programs again, but we've got our NHS Hot Jobs Pack where you can see there's posters and activities that relate to each of the jobs in that pack. We've got maps showing how Career Pilot will work with Gatsby and ideas about how you can embed Career Pilot so you can embed Gatsby in, a, in the best possible way. We've also got 20 minute activities for every age group two 20 minute activities for every age group from year 7 to year 12. And career guides, um, these are just on some of the uh, popular careers that have changed quite a lot recently. So these have got the latest labour market information, the la latest routes. So they're really useful for a careers advisor, keeping yourself up to date, but also great then to give to a student who's got particular interests. So we've got law, dentistry, veterinary, and we're just about to do medicine. So the reporting zone is, uh, is giving you an opportunity to access the data that your students have generated. So there's particular things you could do. You could see what students have registered. You could sort them into two to groups if you want to. They're always in a year group. You can put them into other groups. They can be in multiple groups. But you can also see reports by group or by individual. So if you want to look at a group report, so anything that the students will be doing in career, the career tools will be gathered in the back end. Some of those available as group reports, some you drill down to the individual. But in the group reports, there's a range of choices. You can see who's in that group, look at the job sectors they might be interested in. Uh, you can set tasks and see who's completed those tasks as well. Just made that a bit bigger, even though it's a bit blurry. So, for example, you can see what job sectors your Year 12 students are interested in. And that could help you offer encounters that meet their needs or just give you information about what job sectors your particular groups of students are thinking about. You can also do, uh, you can look at by individual. And when you drill down to the individual, or just make that a bit bigger, you can write, download the full report and send it to a parent. You can view any previous reports. 
but also you could, this is one I use mainly you could view the full report and this is where you can also add comments if you're a guidance advisor you could add an action point you've agreed with the student they can write their own action points from their side but also you can write your report here or if you're a tutor and you want to just give a quick update and that report will be attributed to the person who wrote it and the day they and the date they wrote it as well So if you were in this live session, I get you to log on, have a little look at the group reports and the individual reports as well, and actually try and write an action point just so you become familiar with the different parts of Career Pilot. So just to say there's a lot more training that we offer by webinar, which is free to use. The pink um, flyer there shows you the dates of the different types of training we offer, but also the purple bit, if you're a subscribing school, in a free to access area or you're subscribing as an individual school then we could do other things like we do an introduction to career pilot for your staff team we could do a one-to-one -one consultation with you as a careers leader about how to get started and there's various other things as well so as you've been on this getting started with career pilot session you might be interested to sign up for our reporting zone using the reporting zone to best affect sessions and there will be more dates that we post up in the advisor zone So it's also a parent zone, so what we're trying here is to make sure parents get the answers to questions they're often asking, but we do tell them about the main career pilot site because they do love the main site too. But they kind of have a look at um, some of the questions that parents are often wanting to know the answer to. So under Choices 16, for example, what is a further education college and what courses do they offer? A school can become a super user. To do that, you have to hit three criteria. You have to have a link to CareerPilot on your website. You have to have access to reporting zone. And you have to have at least 100 students who are registered and signed in when they're using the site each academic year, less if you're a special school. You then get a certificate, but you also get access to other things too, like we'll be running live webinars for parents on what are the choices 16, what are the choices after sixth form, and they've been really popular, um, but they only get offered to super user schools to send on to their parents. So hopefully now you can see that this planning sheet uh, has some of the key things you be wanted to think about when you're planning how you're going to implement a career pilot. And at the bottom, you know, you could think about what wraparound resources you can use or what training you'd like to take advantage of. If you've got any questions, we do have a helpline and that's available from nine to three every day in term time. And the email address is careerpilot at bowers.ac uk and joe davis is on the helpline so thank you so much for coming along and listening good luck with implementing career pilot and do get in touch with the helpline should you have any further queries